All right, today I'm going to be teaching you about uh, blackjack card counting strategies. Uh, first of all, speaking of why this works, why card counting is a, is a possibility, why it's a thing, and then getting more into uh, diving into the weeds a bit, thinking about some specific strategies you might implement. Um, primarily what we're doing in this video is just thinking about how it works because there's lots of different card counting uh, methodologies you can use, some that are very complicated, some that are pretty simple. So primarily what I want to do is show you how it works and some things you would need to think about if you were going to try to actually implement card counting strategies. So to do that, I want to start out first uh, with some different possibilities here. Let's imagine you're playing a uh, blackjack game that's using six decks with a lot of the same typical rules that you would expect to see, you know, at a $25 table in Las Vegas, you know, where the blackjack pays three to two, uh, dealer typically hits on a soft 17, uh, things like that. So let's just think about some of these scenarios and what types of cards are most valuable to the player and what types of cards are least valuable to the player. So let's start here with this first scenario. Regardless of what the, the dealer has, let's say that you have a 10 and you don't know what your next card is going to be, right? The, the dealer's given you your first card, but you haven't seen the second one yet. Well, of course, in this scenario, the very best card you can get is an ace. An ace does two things for you. One, it ensures that you can't lose, right? There's no way to lose this hand if you have an ace and a 10 because you've got a blackjack. Um, and it also uh, pays three to two as long as the, you don't push with the dealer. And if you both have blackjacks, so that's a push, you don't win anything. Um, but assuming the dealer doesn't, then this is going to pay three to two. So not only do you win, but you get paid 150% of what your initial bet was. So the ace here is really valuable. Um, the thing to, to recognize here is that's not the only good card. Um, you know, a 10's good, a 9's good, even an 8 is okay uh, in these scenarios. So uh, these would be the cards that you want, all right? But then there's also some cards that would be very bad for you, uh, specifically the 4, the 5, and the 6 would be some particularly bad cards for you. Uh, the reason being is if you have, worst case scenario, a 16, uh, the only way you're going to win if you stand is if the dealer busts. Uh, and if you decide that you need to take another card, well, if you're hitting with 16, you're gonna bust most of the time. So a 16 is a terrible card to have, all right, or a terrible hand to have. So uh, basically what this is suggesting is for this specific hand, uh, an ace, a 10, and a nine is good, a four and a five and a six is bad. So why is this important? Why is this specific hand important? Well, for one, it's common. Think about single deck uh, of, of cards. You've got not just the 10, right? Uh, this asterisk here is basically suggesting that there's more than just 10s. There's 10s, jacks, queens, and kings. In a single deck, there's 16 of those cards. All right, so you've got 16 chances that you would be in this scenario. All right, 16 out of 52 cards uh, that would put you in this scenario here if you're doing single deck, and that that ratio is approximated using six decks as well. So this is going to happen a lot. And two, you've got the possibility of three to two, all right, on the blackjack. Okay? So this is common. You might get paid out three to two. So this is the type of hand that we might care about more than other potential hands, all right? Another important hand, this is a, if you start playing blackjack uh, some, you'll see this type of hand is actually pretty common where you've got something like 13 or 14, and the dealer's got something like maybe 14, 15, or 16, okay? Uh, this is a scenario where you are going to stand, uh, something you should learn very early on if you're trying to hone your basic strategy skills, is if the dealer is showing a six, you're not ever gonna put yourself in a scenario where you could bust, all right? So on this 13, you're going to stand, which means you need the dealer to bust for this hand to be valuable for you, all right? So let's think about what types of cards would be good for you, okay? For this question mark here, the cards that would be good, 10 would be great, that would give the dealer 16, uh, nine would be good, eight would be good, and they become progressively worse as you go down, right? So a 10 gives the dealer 16, which means they're very likely to bust. Uh, a nine would give them 15, which means they're still probably going to bust, but the probability is lower, and so forth, all right? So an eight gives them 14 down the line. So those would be good cards uh, for there to occur here in this question mark. The worst cards would be cards that would enable the dealer to potentially make a good hand. So basically, uh, an ace, 
right? Ace is going to give the dealer a, a soft 17, so they're going to take another card there. Um, five, no good, because now they've got 11, right? If they, if they have 11, they're going to take another card, a good chance they end up with a good hand. Um, four, and so forth. So you've got some good cards, and you've got some bad cards, and then the ones in the middle are kind of, you know, not so good, not so bad. So what makes this important, again, is that it's common. This type of scenario where you're hoping that the dealer is going bust is something that happens a lot in blackjack. So this is an important scenario uh, because it just happens so frequently, all right? Um, so basically what, what I'm pointing out here is, you know, the 10 is showing up here in both scenarios. So the 10 is a good card for you, whether you're wanting the 10 or whether you're hoping the dealer gets the 10. It turns out the 10 is it being a good card to have in the deck. So if you could somehow play a game of blackjack where there's just a bunch of 10s, a bunch of face cards in the deck, you would do really well. All right, and that's kind of what card counting is about, trying to figure out scenarios when there's a lot of 10s in the deck. Okay. So let's say uh, on that very last hand, the dealer indeed gets a 10. Great outcome for you. So the dealer's got 16. They're going to take uh, one more card. All right. In this scenario, the cards that are good for you, 10, 9, 8, 7, and 6. These are going to be your bus cards. All right. Any of these cards here, okay, 10s are just representing face cards. Any of these 10s here would bust, and 9, 8, 7, and 6 would do the same. On the contrary, any of the other cards in the deck, all right, ace, five, four, three, or two, these are all bad cards for you, all right? In all of these scenarios, the dealer is not going to bust, and you need them to bust. That's the only way you're going to win. So yet again, the outcome is these tens and nines, they're good cards for you, okay? And you can see the ace, it's showing up good sometimes and bad sometimes. Uh, so we'll have to figure out mathematically, is it a good card for you or not? Uh, and again, why we care so much about this is because it's a common outcome. It's a common thing to, to really hope that the dealer busts. This card right here is a really important card for you, right? Uh, it's, you're either going to win or lose. Not all cards are like that. Uh, if you had a 9 and a 4 and the dealer's showing a 9, you're going to hit. Uh, and there's some cards that might win, some cards that might lose. So, you know, there's some wishy-washy cards. But in this scenario, it's... It's binary. You either win or lose based on the next card. So that card right there is of particular importance to you. And then lastly here, let's think of this scenario um, where you've got a 6 and a 5 and the dealer's got an 8. Hopefully you understand what you should do here. This is a no-brainer situation where you want to double down. Okay. So in this double down scenario here, this question mark, what would be a good card for you to get? Again, it's a 10. Turns out 10s are good for the player a lot of the time. So a 10 would be good for you, uh, 9 would be good, 8 would be solid, you know, down the line. Cards that would be bad for you, um, really 2, 3, 4, 5, those cards are going to be no good for you. These cards are all uh, going to be below 17, so if you draw to one of these cards here uh, with your double down, you're basically hoping that the dealer busts. That's the only way you can win. Okay. Uh, the reason this matters so much is because you've got a two times bet. So it pays essentially double. It's double the risk. Okay? So it's not so much that this is a super common outcome. It happens some. But it's important because this is going to be a big swing for you. You're either going to win two times your normal bet or lose two times your normal bet. So those scenarios when you're doubling down are twice as important. And so what this tells us is, in a lot of scenarios where your bets are really important, tens are good, nines are pretty good, eights are pretty good as well. Okay. So taking all this in, you know, we, sort of just to rehash what we've been talking about here, you know, these tens, nines, and eights tend to be really good cards for the players, regardless of what sort of scenario we think about. Um, and then cards like fives and fours, you know, they tend to be bad cards for the players. So ideally what you want is to play a game that has lots of tens, all right? Obviously you want lots of tens. And secondly, you want few fours and fives and things like that. So you can sort of imagine if you're playing blackjack, all right, with a shoe like this, this has got six decks in it, 
and let's say you start pulling out cards. If a four has been played and it's gone, it's been played in a prior hand, that right there, would that be good or bad news that the four is gone? That would be good news for the player, right? Because fours are usually bad cards for the player. So if you could somehow toss a bunch of these fours out, that'd be great for the player. So ultimately counting cards is all about finding a shoe, right? Finding one of these, this is a dealer shoe, finding a shoe that has a lot of tens and nines still remaining, and it's eliminated a lot of these cards like fours and fives that are not good for the player, okay?